Hello, thank you for joining us for another episode of Art Rocks with me, James Fox Smith of Country Roads Magazine. Newcomb College has long been associated with beautiful American arts and crafts style pottery items, created in New Orleans at the Women's College from the late 1800s through the 1940s. Newcomb pottery often featured Louisiana flora, rendered in blue, green and yellow high glazes. Beginning in the 1950s though, Newcomb College had a young, highly regarded director who began introducing students to a brave new world of form, colour and design. Here's Mel Buchanan, Curator of Decorative Arts and Design at the New Orleans Museum of Art, to tell Catherine Choi's story. Catherine Choi was born in China, but she came to the United States in the late 1940s for her education. She was educated at some of the best schools working in craft and arts and design in the early 1950s. She was at Mills College in California, and then she was at the Cranbrook Academy of Art outside of Detroit, Michigan. At the early age of 24, she was already a rising star in American craft. She got her first professional job in New Orleans. She was hired at age 24 to be the director of ceramics at the Newcomb College. The Newcomb Pottery here in New Orleans has a long tradition in art. It was founded in 1895 with a radical mission of its own. That was to educate Southern women to have a useful skill where they could support themselves. And that's the classic era of Newcomb Pottery. The beautiful moss-draped trees and greens and blues, sort of the arts and crafts movement of pottery. And that was what Newcomb was known for, about 1900 all the way up to the American Depression, around the 1930s. Things in the 1940s with World War II, attention shifts away from the arts in many ways. As we're coming out of that era in the early 1950s, the Newcomb Pottery's long-term director, Sadie Irvine, retired in 1952. So the school was looking to make a shift from those traditions of Newcomb College Pottery. And that's when they hired the 24-year-old Catherine Choi, who would have come to the school thinking about pottery in an entirely different way. That might mean whereas Newcomb before, or really ceramics, across the country before, you were thinking about them more in terms of useful wares, teapots, vases. They may have intended to be beautiful or decorative, but they had a use. There was a moment here, and artists like Catherine Choi are an important part of this, of shifting clay to being something that is art. So here we're seeing an artist that, like a painter or a sculptor, is using clay as a medium to express an idea or to express a point of view, or to express maybe an emotion through clay. That was a very new idea, a radical idea in ceramics in the 1950s. So Catherine Choi, though she's there running kilns and doing the really complicated work of glaze chemistry and keeping the potter's wheels all up and running, what they're really doing is making artwork. So they're communicating with painters and sculptors she was also a weaver. There's a lot more multidisciplinary or talking across different medium than there would have been in the production years of the pottery. They were artists first and foremost, rather than salesmen trying to sell their work. They were about producing ideas in clay. So when you look at this era of pottery in the 1950s, it's a combination of training yourself to understand and know traditions in ceramic, so how to throw a beautiful form, how to do the glaze chemistry, but then also while you're learning something that's been centuries old and is kind of universal, but also make it your own. In looking at the ceramic forms and colors of Catherine Choi, you see that she was well-trained in Asian ceramic traditions to start. Yes, she was born in China, but really this education she was getting as a young American student in the early 1950s, these schools were looking at Japanese folk traditions. This was very popular in the early 1950s to look at Asian ceramics. And they were learning timeless forms, applying calligraphy-like brush strokes, using different glazes that had thousands of years of history. However, what we see with Catherine Choi is subverting or changing those traditions. 
the pots are getting big and heavy and abstract, so you'll see vases that have three different openings at the top, or a pitcher that might have two spouts coming out, multiple handles, but really it's the scale. Like these are really big, extraordinarily large pots. This is no longer something where you're thinking, I could use this pitcher to serve lemonade. That is not what we're looking at here. We're looking at a pitcher that's oversized because it's more about expression. And then you look at other pieces where it's not even recognizable as a clay historic form at all. It's not really a vase. It's not really a pitcher. It's certainly not a teapot. It is a sculpture made out of clay. So you'll see that in the shapes and the forms and the scale. She's getting really big. And if you start to think of what the labor behind that was, this was a very physical process to make a pot like this. And then you can also look at details like the glaze. She was essentially trained to do the difficult science, the chemical science of glaze. She knew how to master glazes. She also would have known how to make a glaze perfectly fit your vessel. But then you look at her work and suddenly the glaze is not covering all the clay. That in itself in the 1950s was radical. You can see the raw dirt underneath the glaze. So that is a choice that she was making. That's kind of telling you a little bit about the honesty of the material and how it's made. Catherine Choi had work that was being shown in exhibitions across the country. She had a gallery in New York City that was selling her work. In 1957, ambition took Catherine Choi away from New Orleans. She, with the backing of her family and a few New Orleans patrons, she bought a pottery in Port Chester, New York, right outside of New York City. And she and a few friends founded the Clay Art Center in fall of 1957. It's still there today, operating in her honor, running as a community center dedicated to advancing art as clay. Shockingly, Catherine Choi passed away in February of 1958. She was only 30 years old, and by all period accounts, looking through letters of her shocked family, her shocked friends here in New Orleans, it was unexpected. She was taken at the height of her career. While she was organizing this new venture at the Clay Art Center, she had bold new work she was making that was going to go to Brussels to be in the World's Fair in Brussels in 1958. It is incredible for such a really short period of time how she not only amassed a large body of work, by all accounts, she worked nearly round the clock sometimes, but also in a short career of really five, six, maybe seven years after her graduation, that she evolved so much as an artist. And that's what's extraordinary, to look at what she did create and try to not think of it with melancholy of the what if she had continued on, if she had lived another 30, 40, 50 years of production, but really looking at what she did accomplish in a short time.